Welcome to Everything Intellectual Property, where, as you may guess, we talk about everything intellectual property. Today, we have a special dispute going on out of the Midwest. Let me let, let, me let you guys know where, what we're talking about. Dots and pot dots. We'll read the article here in a little bit, but Tootsie Roll, who owns dots, threatens a Michigan cannabis company over edible dots. Now, I have some experience... Uh, I, I'm in Michigan, for those of you who don't know, and uh, this Michigan-based cannabis company is actually out of Lansing, Michigan, and I, that, Lansing is like my second home. I went to undergrad there. I went to law school there, and for those of you who don't know, I have a crazy story to talk about the cannabis uh, side of things in Michigan, particularly in Lansing. So back when I was in undergrad, well, not in undergrad, but yeah, between undergrad and law school, I uh, have some property out in the city of Lansing and when Michigan when they uh, legalize marijuana if you don't know Michigan is one of the states uh in the country that has legalized marijuana or cannabis uh man these cannabis shops were popping up left and right in uh in Lansing and I actually had a tenant because I have a duplex so I had a tenant who uh they had a couple uh, cannabis stores and like I said it was almost like an unregulated things man every corner that it was a saturated market in Lansing as far as cannabis shops went. It wasn't uh regulated, so to speak. So you can just, you know, set up your cannabis shop anywhere and sell cannabis and make money and things like that. So then, uh, and this is where it gets interesting. So I had a, a tenant who had uh, a couple cannabis shops and then all of a sudden they regulated, they start land, the city of Lansing started to regulate, uh, you know, cannabis shops being open. So they were you know, closing left and right. And you had to have a license. You had to go through a process to get a license, which was pretty difficult. And uh, what had happened was in this case, he applied for, and this guy has a girl and you know, two kids and he applied for a, this is like their livelihood at this point. He applied to you know, the state government for a, a cannabis license and he didn't get it. And again, you know, this is his livelihood. He has, you know, kids that he's taking care of, a wife that he's taking care of. And they were, you know, largely you know, running their cannabis shop. And uh, as a result of him not getting it, they fell on hard times. And he did the unthinkable in trying to rob a bank. Now, the unfortunate part, this is where the story takes a turn, is that he wasn't a U.S. national. So he had been here for a long time, had different businesses, a very, uh, you, know, I, you know, he made a very bad decision. But I think overall, all in all, he was a good guy. And he made a terrible decision. And like I said, he wasn't a U.S. national. And as a result of that, he got deported back to uh, his homeland. And uh, so, I mean, again, yeah, it was a crazy story. And like I said, I had to deal with it because I'm the landlord. And next thing you know, I hear from his girl that, hey, such and such tried to rob a bank and obviously didn't get away with it. And I think he had like $100, $200. So the bank that he tried to rob, he didn't even get a lot of money. As a result of it, and like I said, ultimately getting deported, and I had to, you know, the FBI, and whoever was calling my phone, trying to get information, and it was a crazy story. It's a crazy story, but I'm saying all this to say that the cannabis, the cannabis, uh, in in the state of Michigan, particularly in Lansing, was a hey, it it was a it was a thing. It was a thing. It was a big thing. It still is a big thing, but you know, seven eight years ago when it was unregulated, man, it was like the wild wild west. It's a little bit more regulated now, so. But again, so Dots is owned by Tootsie Roll. Obviously, you see the Tootsie Roll brand. And uh, obviously, as you may have may have expect, they have a trademark on the term Dots in the candy category. So Pot Dots is a, it's a Lansing, Lansing based company. Uh, they have the term Pot Dots, which, as you may imagine, it's uh, cannabis candy, uh, as you see here a sugar shell infused with milk chocolate. So it's essentially like a chocolate milk does something along those lines where you uh oh you, know, you you eat it and you know essentially you get high. And I guess if you don't know trademark law is all about the likelihood of confusion. So just looking at the packaging, I want you guys to tell me is this a likelihood of confusion? Or in other words, do you think Tootsie Roll has kind of spun off with uh a candy base, a can, a cannabis based candy, and pot dots. Again, you don't have to have the exact name, but if it's a likelihood of confusion, if the consumer was to look at pot dots, 
and then look at the trademark name dots do you think it'll be a likelihood of confusion in other words the consumer would think that all of a sudden dot titsy roll and dots have kind of spun off and got into the cannabis market with pot dots i, I think it's some arguments both ways i definitely think it's some argument both ways uh but let, let's read this article and this is going to be a short video i'm gonna get you out on here i definitely would like to give you leave a comment in the comment section of this video letting me know whether or not you think you would think that is a likelihood of confusion uh but we're going to get off into the the article here so the intensity roll maker issue cease and desist letter to michigan edibles company so they didn't sue them and they they instead just uh they they issued a cease and desist letter or sent them a cease and desist letter and let and this article is going to be indicative of how uh how strong, how persuasive a cease and desist letter is. I had a, a, a prospective client reach out to me this past week and uh, he has a trademark on his, you know, he has a trademark. Let's just leave it there. And he uh, said, hey, man, this company is suing. I mean, this company is using my trademark. Should we sue them? And he hadn't sent a cease and desist letter. I said, man, you, you don't want to sue them because at that point, I have to draft a complaint. We're going to have to uh, you know, obviously serve it and file it. And that's going to cost you a ton of money. I highly recommend you to instead let's do a cease and desist letter and then we can send it to them and to the extent that they don't stop, we can maybe send them a second one or we can file a lawsuit at that point. But the cease and desist letter is going to be your cheaper option as well as going to be your more, most effective option. And this article is going to uh, let you know why. So Lansing based Lions Lab changed the name of this THC infused hard chocolate candies from pot dots to pot pots. So again, Lansing based, I guess the name of the, the uh, company's Lion Labs out of Lansing, uh, they end up changing their name from Pot Dots to Pot Pot. So again, this is showing you already be, without getting into the article how effective this cease and desist letter it was. It issued a cease and desist letter to this Lansing company, Lions Lab. And what do you know? They changed their name. Let's see why they changed their name. Let's go, go through the article really quickly. The parent company that makes well-known Tootsie Roll candy issued a stern cease and desist letter to a Michigan cannabis Edibles company forcing marijuana business to rebrand one of his more popular offerings. So this is a popper, and that's one of the things is it's one thing when you are it's it's a newer candy or it's a newer product, and it's like, okay, whatever, man, we'll rebrand anyway. But when it's a popular product, people are coming in the store, hey man, what them pot dots at? What them pot dots at? And when they're not seeing that name and it's a popular candy, that can have an effect on your sales. So uh again, them switching the name. That, that means something in this case, because especially since it's one of his more popular items. So Lansing Based Lines Lab announcing a new release. So they announced in a release that it was changing the name of its product line of THC infused hard chocolate candies from pot dots to pot pots. After Tootsie Roll sent the company a notice threatening legal action and containing that pot dots was infringing on their trademark of Tootsie Roll's dots candies. While, while Lion Labs firmly believes that there's no merit to the claim, it opted to change its name to Pop Pops to avoid pr pr uh, protracted legal proceedings with the nationwide candy company, uh, Lion Labs, releasing a statement. So, again, I, I want you to, the, the, the company of this Lion Labs said, hey, man, this is this is not even an issue. You, you, you guys tell me, like I said, the whole part point of trademark law is likelihood of confusion. Do you think the Tootsie Roll brand has at least a claim that pot dots is that the consumers would be you know maybe confused that they would have thought that tootsie roll and dots is getting off into marijuana with the pot dots i mean i, I think they at least have an argument i think pot dots also has some arguments as well but looking at those pictures pot dots dots i mean you, you can make it definitely make a claim that uh that is a likelihood of confusion, which again, that's that's the whole standard of trademark law is likelihood of confusion. So let's get back to the article here. So again, the the, the CEO of Lion Labs believe that there's no merit to the claim. I, I don't think I wouldn't say there's no merit to the claim, but he has arguments as to why that is no likelihood of confusion. I, I wouldn't say that is no merit to the claim. And what does those arguments look like? Hey, man, dot sell candy. Yeah, we sell candies, but it's cannabis come cannabis. Come candy somebody who's looking to buy candy this is not on the shelf our pot dots are not on the shelf of myers so somebody coming in here uh into our cannabis uh, shop they're 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 trying to buy not candy but they're trying to buy cannabis and in this case the cannabis is comes in the form of candy so somebody would 
pay attention and know that dots all of a sudden is not starting to sell cannabis or got into the cannabis uh, uh industry with their you no know, with their trademark name dots that that's the how the argument would look like for this pot dots company in terms of saying why there's no likelihood of confusion hey cannabis is a totally separate thing from uh, candy and although we're we're saying we're selling candy uh it's cannabis infused candy and you would expect that uh that somebody who's looking to buy dots as candy is not going to be in a cannabis shop looking to do that so that's an argument that he has but again like i said before pot dots dots it looks kind of similar so i wouldn't say it's no uh it's no merit to the claim but he definitely has arguments as to why there is not uh trademark infringement let's move on here while Lions Lab furniture, okay, we read that next paragraph. Lion Lab CEO Ryan said his company is disappointed in the situation, but other than one letter renaming, its product line will remain unchanged. So they just said pot dots to pot pots. So they just changed the D to the P. So again, it is it, it isn't a big re uh, re uh, branding, but it is a rebranding nonetheless. We look forward to avoiding any disputes and are excited for our one milligram. Okay, so that's that. Uh, for more than a decade, mainstream candy companies and food makers have been sending such letters to marijuana startups. That so this seems like this is a thing where uh, candy companies uh, are sending cease and desist letters to marijuana startups that have produced knockoff goods infused with marijuana based on the popular foods. Most cannabis companies choose the path of least resistant and brand as Lion Lion Labs did. So it seems like this is a thing where people are. Uh, and, and again, Lion's Lab. If, if you would ask Ryan, they, they probably try to. Uh, try to do a play off the word dots and kind of take some of that okay dots is a popular name so okay this is uh something that's popular that people are going to come into the marijuana shop and they're going to be able to identify with or at least say hey is this dots and 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 pot dots is a play on dots and make it and i guess the consumer may think it's interesting and uh thereby buy some 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 marijuana infused or cannabis infused candy but again as the article said Cannabis, I mean, not cannabis companies, but uh, can, uh, candy companies are, they're, they're getting hip to this. And again, likely the confusion, you have to protect the brand. And to the extent that you have come across your desk that a company, whether it's a cannabis company, whether it's a company that's in your industry, is maybe looking to try to dilute your brand name or are they're, they're committing trademark infringement, you got to send them a cease and desist letter. And to the extent that they don't comply, you got to be ready to sue them. That's the whole standard and point of trademark law you have to protect the brand name if you're not looking to protect the brand name do not file a trademark or protect your intellectual property because especially with trademark you have to be willing to at least send a cease and desist letter and i think to be honest with you uh i think the cannabis company did the right the right the right thing here man hey as opposed to saying pot dots and going off into litigation and spending a ton of money and it's really a toss-up because there's arguments in both sides let's just rebrand and again, it wasn't a whole lot of rebranding that they had to do. They just went from pot dots to pot pots. And, uh, and I, I would have definitely also told them to take away the, the coloring where you have the red and a yellow and a green. I would also told them to take that away because that 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 kind of overall look and feel can also be a confusing to a consumer to say, hold on, is that is that the company dots who got into the marijuana company? So again, I if I think dots did a good job or Tootsie Roll rather did a good job as far as sending the cease and desist letter. And again, I think even though the cannabis company has some arguments, again, man, you're trying to make money. So you don't want to be kind of jammed up in lawsuits. So I think they did a good job and as the article said, took the path of least resistance and uh just change the brand name. In this case, it wasn't a whole lot of rebranding they had to do. They just dropped the D or replaced the D with the P from going from pot dots to pot pot. So let me know what you guys think about this. Did you think that it was a likelihood of confusion or trademark infringement with pop with dots and then pot dots? Uh, do you think that the 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 the, the, the Lansing Cannabis Company did the right thing and just changing their name, or do you think they should have fought it? Let me know what you guys think about that. In the comment section again i am almost 10 year intellectual property attorney dealing with everything from trademarks to patents copyrights trade secrets nil you name it i deal with it so uh i thought this was an interesting one uh kind of giving the candy lovers and the marijuana lovers again i guess some tug of war going on there and hopefully you guys learn something again likelihood of confusion it doesn't have to be a literal uh a literal copying if it's you no know, likelihood of confusion 
then it could potentially be trademark infringement. You need to at least send a cease and cease and desist letter. And again, a cease and desist letter is a powerful tool. Because a lot of times companies, especially if it can be a toss up, they're going to say, hey, man, he has a trademark or she has a trademark or that company has a trademark. I'm going to just change my name as opposed to having to kind of fight with the company, uh, particularly bigger companies. But even if you're a smaller company and you have a trademark, uh, you know, a lot of companies, whether it's a big company or a small company that you're sending that cease and desist letter to, a lot of times, they're just changing the name to kind of avoid like legal dispute and finances and just kind of get back to business and selling products because that's what the companies are in business for to make money. So hopefully you got something out of this video and you enjoyed it. Until next time, take care.